Okay, so we soften up that area and we have the Aurora Borealis. Now the Aurora Borealis is animated by nature. Of course, we could animate the moon phase if we wanted to uh, make it look like the planets were moving kind of quickly. And let's go ahead and dim down or add a couple of blend transfer nodes to see what's happening with the Aurora Borealis. In this case, I'm going to leave the normal. I'm going to bring it down to about 80 or 90 percent. And the Luna, I'm going to go into the rings control. And in the ring brightness, I'm going to bring that down considerably. I do want it to accumulate, however, with this Aurora Borealis. So now we got this great color. Now the next phase is going to be locking down the color changes inside of the main image. In this case, the snow is a little bit warm for our particular scene, our new scene. So I'm going to add a color corrector just to bring in some blues into the highlights to make it look like the time of day is just slightly different. So let's go ahead and bring in a color corrector. And immediately I'm just going to go into the highlights. And I'm going to start moving some of those highlights into a bluer, cooler color. And that's basically going to make the difference for me. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. And last but not least, let's start working on this little snowstorm area. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save this out. It's going to be called the Luna Smoke Moon. We'll call this uh, recording. Hit save. Now I'm going to drag the smoke into place. I'm just going to kind of leave it over here for now. This item will take a little bit of work to get exactly the way you want, but we are going to use from the color corrector. I'm going to click on the smoke and I'm going to drag it into place. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's tons of different demos. You got dry ice, you got puff, you got wisp. Any one of these could be the one that you want to use and you can just modify it. So let's take a look at a couple of these. I'm going to go ahead and select the puff for now. And I'm going to do a restart and pre-roll. And you can see that we have, well, it's fairly large looking clouds. And I'm not exactly crazy about that. Don't forget to set your play range. Let's do it to 90 frames for now. Again, you will have different settings than I will if you want to do different effects. And last but not least, of course, let's go ahead and set the emission to be teared off on this side of the mountain and if I hit restart and pre-roll you can see that it you know now we're getting it just from this location here now we want to blow it in the left direction of course and how we do that is we have to go into forces and we'll select wind and the wind always shows up facing that direction so we'll have to grab its modifier and select wind and let's go ahead and restart and pre-roll and you can see that even then once it leaves the scene we have to make sure that we have it blowing in the, in the proper direction. Let's go ahead and aim it down a little bit so we can get the proper direction there. And now we have to start playing around with the size and color. Of course the color we want to pick up a little bit of blue and we're gonna play with that a little bit later. That takes a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and go to smoke and instead of look where it says puff. You have the option for streaks. You have the option for points. I'm actually going to go ahead and select streaks. And I'm going to let's zoom in here so you can see what's going on. I'm going to actually lower its extin extinction value so they die over less time. I'm going to restart and pre-roll. And you can see that they die right about here now. That's not too bad. Now I want to also decrease it ever so slightly, probably like 11 even less perhaps 10 again this is always trial and error just like any particle type of event this is a particle type event I don't want it to be into the trees so I'm going to decrease it even more even though it won't be visible in the trees I just know that it shouldn't be in front of the trees so let's go ahead and do another restart and pre-roll all right so now we can increase the density restart and pre-roll all right, that's looking kind of normal there. And the lifetime we can play with as well. However, the initial heat, I'm going to leave the way it is, the velocity variation. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we decrease that a little bit. All right. Okay, so now we have it tearing off to the left. However, it looks 
pretty terrible the way it is, but how I'm going to handle that is with two different types of blurs. And we're going to then composite it into the scene. So let's go ahead and add the first blur, which is going to be a motion blur, standard blur inside of Fusion. I'm going to grab the directional blur here. And remember, this is on its own layer. Let's go ahead and hit the smoke. And let's see, six smoke. If we can get the item to work. Actually, we could probably get this a little bit closer to what we need before I go ahead and start adding localized blurs. The um, density is pretty high. Let's go ahead and restart and pre roll. Density is still pretty high here. Let's go into the color. Lower the intensity a little bit. And I noticed, let's go ahead and hit the playback and see how fast we're going here. See, the wind is awfully quick in the smoke, so we have to sort of hide that with different types of blurs. Okay, you can see where we're going with this, though. All right, let's go into the forces a little bit more. Now, the gravity, well, gravity is interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the setting here. I'm going to, it's 0 0.001 now, remember that setting. You can see that the restart and pre-roll has it falling off over a sp specific amount of time. So we're going to want it to pretty much start to get heavy here and then fall down. And again, inside the color, you can remember that you can sort of play with the color here. To sort of get it to blend in with the background. Now, the bluer the color, obviously, the better for our particular shot. And let's go ahead and... I'll reduce that down to down. Let's go down to the forces here. Let's say, what else do we have that we can sort of tweak this to get to look fine? Now, the wind speed, the wind spread. Wind speed is actually fine. Let me decrease the wind speed just a little bit. I don't want it going too fast. Let's go ahead and hit the playback. All right, that's looking fairly decent there. And inside of the smoke, let's go back and see what else we can fix. Density, lifetime, extension, initial heat, velocity, the look is streak. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we got points. See if it shows up. In fact, it is showing up, but ever so slightly. However, this ever so slightly is probably what you would see. Now, you can see it moving here ever so slightly, and that's exactly what we want. I'll go ahead and actually just tweak this final setting here and go back to frame zero. And you can see that it's actually accumulating. Now, in this case, instead of using a directional blur, I can increase the density on that particular device. You might want to make a separate pass out of it. There we go. So now we have our snow in the background, and that's uh, actually working out pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit the playback. Good. And I want to say the wind speed is a little high. I want to bring the wind speed down as far as I can go, because I don't think it needs to be that high. All right, and that's looking fairly good there. Gives us some extra movement in our scene. And last but not least, go ahead and look at the last frame. We got our new s snow actually breaking off the mountain. We got the Luna, and we got the moving Aurora Borealis. I'm going to say this is a done scene, ready to go. And if you want any more information on any of these plugins, go ahead and tick back at the CMI VFX page just to make sure we haven't covered it in another topic as well. Thanks again.